Hi, welcome back. We're going to create uh, our own search engine ourselves in this tutorial. Um, very similar to the list view search filter which you could see in a previous uh, tutorial called how to search using list view. So basically it's going to have the same functionality, well similar functionality uh, as close as we can but we're actually going to program it this time um, which uh, allows you a bit more flexibility in, in the kind of searches you might want to do if you're given a project um, which requires a little bit more sophistication than the, the show filter bar which is the, the typical one which uh, we showed you last time. Okay, so using this list here um, of records which are stored in, in a list we can search for uh, let's clear that out of the way search for let's say um, 152 we can see at least one record there with 152 click search um, and you can see all the records with 152 and there's four of those uh, clear will reset me back to the original list well that's just how I programmed it anyway so it's the same kind of thing as well, similar to anyway list view filter search but with a little bit more flexibility in the code as we shall see soon. So how have I set this up? Well what I've done is I've put in the designer a text box for the search field, uh, the search button and a clear button as well. The list view uh, from over here and a notifier so we'll, uh, then maybe we can send a message if we feel the need to do that. So what I'm going to do now is talk you through the blocks for this. Okay, you'll remember these from the uh, how to make a list view. Nothing's changed. I think I might have put one or two extra records in here. The important thing here is that I've got a variable called global items when I'm set setting to a list of records that I've put in by default onto my system. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at, and that happens at screen initialize, we're going to look at the clear search uh, button and to start with the search button itself and I'm going to take you through all the blocks of code um, from the top to the bottom. Okay, moving on quickly. What I've done here is I've created a global variable called results list and it's a list obviously and I'm creating an empty list. Now I've decided that this is how I want to store the results of my search. It's going to be another list in here. You'll see why as we go to the search. Okay, well Every time I click on search, I want to refresh this results list from get rid of the old results, if you like, from the last search. So the first thing I'm going to do is set when the search button is clicked, reset this results list back to an empty list. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a global variable called user text, set it to null. And I'm going to, when I click on the search, I'm going to use that to take whatever the users put in their text box on the screen and convert that to uppercase to store in the uh, global user text variable. And the reason for that is that I want everything to look the same because they're all uppercase inside here as well. Right, the next thing I'm going to, the next thing I'm going to need to do is I need to go and get a for, we call a for each block. Now we need a for each list for each item in this because we're actually processing through a list. So I'm going to use that and this will go through each of these in turn so I want to be all from the stop top right the way to the bottom down here and each of those will be called item and the list where we've got them in is global items so I'm going to go there and get global items pop it in there okay so for each of those what do I want to do well I want to see if the item one of one of whatever it is I'm looking at here contains the text that they've entered in the text box text if it's the same then the records matched up and I can store it in my results list so that all sounds quite complicated but actually it's really very simple we're going to need an if statement for this and the other really important one for this is the text here and you'll see there's this ah uh, here it is contains text right and that's what we're going to use to check to see if what we've entered is what's in the record in the list. 
Okay. You do need to hover over this sometimes, and it's very useful. This tests whether the piece is contained in the text. Okay, so the text that I'm looking at is this thing here, this current record, or item as they call it. And the piece, well I've already converted that into this get uh, global user text, all I need to do on that <coughs> is a get global user text. Okay, and if I've got a match, then all I want to do is build up this results list. So I need to go to lists, find the add items. We're going to add further items to our global items list. And we're going to um, add items to our global results list here. So yeah. add items into our results list. And the item that we're currently looking at is what we want to add in there. Okay. So once we've um, gone through each of these items and we've uh, added them to a list, hopefully if they've got a result, or doesn't matter if they don't, we need to really check to see if we have a result. So after the for each, we will just do a little check with this thing called is list empty. And the list we're going to check to see if empty is this global results list. If it's empty, then no point doing anything, perhaps tell the user that it's empty. And I'm going to do that with a little text box here. A notifier saying no results. Whoops, no results. So for that search, there's no results. Okay. If there is results, clearly we won't execute this statement. So the next thing we need to do is just load up our list view elements to our results that we have got. And there they go. Run that in there. You could do that with an if else. Uh, to be honest with you, that uh, doesn't really matter. But let's uh, let's give this a try. Let's we'll go to the emulator. Right. Okay. Some time has passed. Um, because I didn't do anything on the initialization of the screen, no records came up. But my little clear button, um, which I haven't showed you about yet, does actually uh, reset this text box. Um, and just to show the search is working, um, here we go. One five two. Let's see if you records there one by two <coughs> returns excuse me four four records. So um, let's check for Piper. We know there's a couple of those there. There they are, Piper, Piper. So you could even check for a date this way if you wanted. I mean two thousand and fourteen records that are a two thousand fourteen, there they all are. I think there's a two thousand thirteen in there as well. We'll just check that too. Search. Yes, a couple of records there, 2013. So that all works fine. This clear button, I'll just show you how I coded that now. Um, I will just collapse these blocks. Just show you this one here. It's quite simple. When it's clicked, I'm going to set the text box dot one text to uh, nothing, and the list view on elements to our original global items. So it gives us something to dis to display. Okay. Now. Um, what I would like to do also is to show you the initialize here. And why don't we, when the screen's initialized, also set that global items, uh, sorry, elements there. So we can duplicate that and pop that in there, which means when our screen pop is open, we can load the records straight into the elements. Okay, that's just about it. Um, everything seems to be working fine. Clear work. Uh, the search works. Um, yeah, I'm happy with that. Um, don't forget, try and keep your code tidy. Um, it's just good practice. So there we go, collapse blocks, sort by category, that looks nice. Great, okay, um, have fun with that. That was uh, how to make a very simple uh, custom search engine. Bye.